Hello, hello, it's me, Miss Wesley. You can join me on Limits Packet page 25 as we're about to get back into some limits at infinity. Yesterday we discovered that there's two easy ways to get an infinite limit. You could look at a function, a rational function like this one, and just like you would be finding a horizontal asymptote on the graph, you could compare degrees and the numerator and denominator, decide this is a balanced case where the limit would just be one, or you could look at a graph of a function. Any of these functions can be graphed, and why don't you watch the table values or watch the function values towards the far right or the far left end of the graph. It looks like these values are creeping up to the HA that's going to be at 1 there. But something we haven't talked about are, is if you look at page 25, some transcendental functions. I see a mixture here. I see a bunch of trig expressions with some rational features to the graphs too and some exponential stuff as well and maybe even some logs. Um, a joke is, I thought of a joke, oh it was why did this student eat his homework? Well, because the teacher said it was going to be a piece of cake. Um, Lewis and infinity, transcendental functions. Let's look at these one by one. Think of the graph of sine of x. We don't need any help with what that graph's going to look like, right? We've got a trig um, sine wave. And it's going to bounce between two fixed values, right? So as x gets bigger and bigger, this thing's not honing in on a specific value. It is strictly oscillating between negative 1 and 1, up, down, up, down, up, down. Well, you know what? This is another type of oscillation where we're going to say the limit does not exist. You are going to bounce between two fixed values. So I'll just say sine of x oscillates um, between negative 1 and 1. And keep that in mind because I see sine of x and cosine of x, which would do the same thing in a bunch of these functions to come. What about sine of x over x? Maybe if I put it over x, we can get it to hone in on a limit. Well, I call this the dominator theory. You're going to look at the top and the bottom, look at every term you can see, and figure out as x is getting bigger and bigger, which term here is really going to dominate the behavior of this function. Sine of x, do you think that'll be more powerful, or just regular x? Sine of x has very little power. Unfortunately, it is going to remain between negative 1 and 1. It's just going to stay. The only outputs of this function are just values in between those two fixed values. While the denominator goes wild, the denominator is just going to increase without bound and grow to infinity. So although I can't really say this is bottom heavy in terms of comparing degrees, like I would with a normal rational function, just with polynomials, here I can say this sort of behaves bottom heavy because the denominator is growing without bound. So I'll say zero is going to be an answer for that infinite limit. And you can see that on the graph that I put here too. Sure, there is a type of oscillation here. It is bouncing, but not between two fixed values. It's honing in on that y value of zero and it's getting squeezed, that graph. All right, what about three? You've got three choices. Who's winning in a fight, right? Are you going, is your money on e to the x? Is your money on the number one? Or how about sine of x? Which of those three parts of this function would you consider to be the dominator as x goes to infinity? I'm hoping you're choosing the exponential part. e to the x is just going to grow without bound and go to infinity. 1 stays a 1, not much happening there. And sine of x, as we saw in the other two examples, is going to stay between negative 1 and 1. So the e to the x wins. The e to the x happens to fall up top, meaning this whole thing is just going to grow without bound. You can say positive infinity or DNE because of how this function behaves top heavy. Um, if we looked at, I was actually playing around with the graph of this too. Remember that every single one of these can be checked with a graph. If I were to graph e to the x plus 1 divided by sine of x, watch what happens. As, let me zoom this out, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, watch those y values just grow to infinity. So all these can be checked with a graph or a table too. I'm trying to do as much on this page for starters without having to look to Desmos. So what's going to win here? Cosine of x, these are your contenders. Cosine of x, 3x or x. This one's going to be actually a tie. Um, I think cosine of x is out of the running. Unfortunately, we've talked about how sine and cosine are going to stay between negative 1 and 1. But 3x and x, you might say that the 3x wins because x is going to infinity and you're tripling it, so that's a little bit more powerful. But in the grand scheme of things, you have a large number down here and triple that large number up top. This is going to behave balanced. 
And that 3x over x gives you the ratio of the leading coefficients for your, inf your limit at infinity, and it's just going to be 3. And you could see this on a graph as well. How about 5? Five? 5 and 6 are kind of similar. So we've actually seen this function before, but I've asked you the limit, I think, as x approaches 0 of both of these, which actually doesn't exist. If I were to graph this function, I get this oscillation. Uh, I'll just do it here. It's going to look kind of like that, oscillation in the middle, infinite oscillation, and then there is a limit to both sides, the right and the left. We need to find that y value, y equals, I'll put question mark. Well, what's happening? Let's look inside. You're taking the cosine of 1 over x. This x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so this whole entire fraction is going to go to 0. So this thing will approach the cosine of 0, which is 1. And on the graph, if you were to look at this, the line y equals 1 is going to be the HA of that graph. Um, now we can get a limit for sine of 1 over x. Sine of 1 over x does have that infinite oscillation in the middle, and it's going to look something like this. Um, 1 over x, the whole fraction, again, is going to go to 0. So this whole entire expression approaches the sine of 0, which is 0, and the graph confirms it, right? You're approaching 0 to the far right. 7 and 8 look kind of crazy. Okay, so 7 has an exponential term on the bottom. we got to figure out what dominates here. Um, you've got an 8, you've got a 4, and then you got this guy, minus 10 to the negative x over 2. That is going to flip the 10 and raise it to bigger and bigger powers. This is going to go to 1 over 10 to the x over 2. I don't care that the x is cut in half. As x goes to infinity, this denominator gets larger and larger and larger. The whole entire fraction is going to go to 0. So this thing's out of the running. It's trivial. The 8 and the 4 remain, and those are going to be the parts of your solution. So a way to get this without looking to a calculator is to really see that the 8 and the 4 will stay constant, and your limit's going to be 2. Okay. What about 8? 8 has part of it that's a constant as well, this 5 halves. That can be completely moved out. You can take um, the limit of the constant 5 halves, which just equals 5 halves, plus the limit as x approaches infinity of this fraction, the natural log of x squared plus 1 over x squared. So go to the very innermost part of this function and let's see what's really happening as x goes to infinity. Well, x squared plus 1 over x squared, that's a balanced rational expression, right? These two terms are the same degree. So this fraction will go to 1, and this whole expression is going to go to the natural log of 1. Okay, so if you follow me there. So we've got, so far, we've got a 5 halves that stays a 5 halves. We have plus the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of something that's going to go to 1. Well, this I know is 0, right? Natural log of 1 is 0. You end up with an answer of 5 halves plus 0, which is just the fraction, 2 and a half. So pretty impressive. As you look over this page, there's some kind of crazy looking functions, some unpredictable behaviors of graphs, but we were able to break things down and kind of look at each individual part of the function as x approaches maybe some sort of infinity to get these solutions without having to use a calculator. The ones coming up that I really like are these ones where you have to be creative and sketch a graph with certain limit requirements being met as well. We could actually take the time to look at a couple on page 26. I think these are kind of fun, so let's look at nine. Um, I always like to get the easy requirements out of the way first. So I'm going to say, okay, so f of 0 has to be 0. We have to sketch some sort of function where f of 0 is 0. I'll put a dot at the origin. f of 1 is 1. We could check that off too. And then it says the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x has to be 0. Well, we can make that happen. Either from above or from below, we have to approach, I'm going to even draw in a partial ha there. We have to approach the line y equals 0. An easy thing to do might be to connect up and curve back down and have it approach, you know, kind of the asymptote off to the outside like that. You could actually dip under the asymptote and come back up as long as you're approaching 0. Um, to the far right end of the graph. This is another reason I thought we should try this one together. f is an odd function. I'm kind of springing this on you here. We briefly, if you, um, when we discussed symmetry, we mentioned even in odd functions. And an important thing to remember about odd functions, like an x cubed graph is odd, or actually a sine curve is going to be an odd function. I think of the o's going together in terms of symmetry, so it has origin point symmetry. 
So what I can do here is we've got part of the graph up in quadrant one. We can actually map the graph over both axes. That's how origin point symmetry works. Not just that you're, you have a mirror image over the X or a mirror image over the Y, it's two quarter turns. So if I took this curve in quadrant one and mapped it over to quadrant two, if you can picture it here, and then take that picture and map it down into quadrant three. So the point one one is going to map over to the point negative one, negative one down here. So I'll have it curve up this way. And just like we had the asymptote to the far right, because of the symmetry here, we're going to have an asymptote in HA to the far left of the graph. So just one example of one you could try. 10, 11, 12, these are all really good ones that I would love for you to try on your own. If you want, maybe pause the video. I think 11's the toughest out of this bunch of questions. Maybe pause the video and try this one on your own and then tune back in or see if you can get some of the requirements met on the function. A lot of these, because I see infinity symbols down here, up there as equal to, they're gonna have asymptotes. We're gonna draw dotted lines for VAs and for HAs. I'm gonna try to go left to right because there's five limit requirements I have to meet. It looks kind of daunting at once and work with pencil on these. Don't be afraid to erase. We gotta keep these things functions passing the vertical line test and making sure they meet the requirements so the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals negative infinity can we make that happen well if you have a number here i'm going to put va if x approaches a certain value and the function is increasing or decreasing together what that means is you automatically have a vertical asymptote at that point at x equals 2. So I'm going to put this on the graph at x equals 2. I'll just draw it going up and down the entire graph and this says x approaches 2 with no superscript so from both sides we have to be approaching negative infinity. So what I'm going to do is especially because I don't have pencil here I'm just going to draw two arrows pointing down just a little portion of the graph like we've done before as a strategy so that because I'm not really sure what's going to be going on to the left of this or to the far right of that but those two arrows means this is going to be met from both sides of two the graph is decreasing forever. All right, this is a crazy one. The limit as x approaches infinity equals infinity. We've seen this before too. As x gets bigger, y also has to get bigger. This curve has to slope up indefinitely as you're getting further and further to the right of the graph. I keep looking in the other requirements that are going to have to be met. I don't really see anything else that's happening on the right side of um, x equals 2 that I have to worry about so much. So I'm just going to try to connect down to the graph portion that I already have and have this sloping up indefinitely. So everyone believes that as X grows, Y is gonna grow as well. And I'm gonna check off that requirement. Okay, that was the far right behavior of the graph. What's the far left behavior of the graph? As X approaches negative infinity, we have to draw this so that the function approaches zero, either from above or below, not both, because we wanna keep this thing a function. Um, maybe I'll draw, because I see this portion that's below, maybe I'll draw it from below here and I'll have a little partial HA that's at y equals zero. This graph is approaching like this. Does that look okay? And what else? I think that will satisfy that. Now we've got a few requirements about zero from the left and zero from the right. Again, if you have a constant value here that x is approaching and an infinity symbol for those solutions, we can say that there's going to be a vertical asymptote. Just like um, we said there was going to be a vertical asymptote at 2, there's also going to be a VA at x equals 0. Now different types of infinity to the two sides. So from the right of 0, your graph approaches positive infinity. So it's a good thing I didn't connect the these yet. I need from the right of x equals zero, I need this graph to slope up and approach positive infinity. I say your easiest bet is to S-curve it. That way you've got a VA coming right down the y-axis, right? From the left of two, you're still approaching negative infinity. From the right of zero, you're approaching positive infinity. So that would look pretty good. So that should handle this. Then from the left of zero, the graph approaches negative infinity. So have this fall forever. We have a hyperbola branch. So I never said it was going to look perfect. I never said it was going to look beautiful, but that's what it's going to look like. Last but not least, um, let's look at number 12 together, I guess. It says limit as x approaches negative 2 equals infinity. Okay, so again, in that same case where this is going to be a VA, from both sides of negative 2, this graph approaches infinity. So here's your VA. And just draw the tiniest little um, arrows from the left and right that that graph is going up forever. <clears throat> because we've got far left and far right end behavior of the graph to worry about. To the far left, we have to approach 3. 
to the far right of the graph, we have to approach negative 3. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do partial HAs. Far left up at 3, far right down at negative 3. And you decide how you want this to look. I'll connect this down, so we're approaching this line that way. And I'll do a crazy big hyperbola branch here, so we're approaching negative 3 the other way. So rough pictures, not my best artwork by any means. It has been a pleasure talking with you about limits and calculus. I'll talk to you soon.